So from an engineering perspective, there's two things that you can do in order to make an application run faster. The first is the typical thing that you do in school where you take some code that's kind of fludgy and slow and then you optimize it, you make it run faster, you make it run more efficiently, you change some double stamps and things like that. That's a classic approach to making code run faster. Another thing that you can do is that you can take system resources that aren't being used at the moment and you can exploit them to get things set up so that when the user does perform an action, the response time is much faster than it would be ordinarily, given the constraints of your system. Ajax and Flex are an example of the second type of optimization. And it really gets down to the core of what engineering is all about, which is making the most of the available resources that we have. This is what you know structural engineers do. What can I do with a pound of steel? What's the most weight that a pound of steel can take, right? So the metaphor that I like to think about when thinking about preloading from an engineering perspective is uh, valet parking. So I don't know if this metaphor is relevant in an Indian context, but in San Francisco, if you want to park your car, you have to park it in a parking garage. And the parking garage, you can't park it yourself because they like to pack the cars in really tight so they can get as many cars in as possible. So you have to give it to the guy or the girl and she drives it up to the fifth floor and packs it in right next to all the other cars. And when you, you go the first day on Monday to pick your car up to drive to work at 8.30, you tell the person and they go and they get the car. You go Tuesday and Wednesday and the same thing happens. It takes about five minutes for them to fetch your car. But by the fourth or the fifth day, something different will happen. When you walk in, the car will be there waiting for you. And all you have to do is you just open it up, you put in the key, and you drive away. What's happened is that the valet has observed your use of the system, has noticed a pattern, and has changed the behavior of the system to optimize your user experience. This is what we do when we preload data. We observe user behavior, and then we get things set up in advance so that things run smoother and faster. And it doesn't cost the valet any more time to do this right than it does to go and get it when you show up. In fact, it's easier for them. Because if they know you're showing up at 8.30, they can get it any time between 8 and 8.30. If they have to get it when you arrive, then they have to run and get it right away or else you're going to be pissed. So that's prefetching from an engineering perspective. From a design perspective, it's, it's kind of different. And a different metaphor is more suitable for thinking about this. And I use the metaphor of a magic trick. Magic tricks, every magic trick in the world ever is the same if you look at its structure. You show the audience something. Then you take their attention and you divert it somewhere else. You know, through smoke and mirrors, contraptions, you know, all kinds of tricks. While the audience's attention is focused there, you or your minions change the thing that you've shown the audience. And then you divert their attention back and you show them the thing. Wow, it's changed. How'd that elephant get in there, right? It's magic. It's really popular. So, RIAs work on a similar principle. You have very fine-grained control of user attention because it's a smooth user experience. It's not this clunky page-based metaphor where you click, you wait, it loads. You click, you wait, it loads. You can do anything on the screen, whatever you want. You can make little things flash and vibrate and jiggle, and, and uh, you can make the eyeballs go wherever you want. So you can control the user's flow through your application. While they're being distracted by the bubbles and the glitz, you can download the data in the background. And then when they act on the data, even though it's obviously you know, a terabyte data set like what Google Maps is using, it feels like it's right there on your desktop, which is clearly impossible. <laughs> so that's the magic trick. 